Hello plan community, thanks for tuning in to this channel. My name is Pam and today you guys we're going to finally do the house plan tour that I've been kind of like talking to you guys about. So I'm going to get a chance where we're going to hit up the three main areas in my home and I'll share um, my plants as well as any changes, any new growth, anything that I may have done. So come on along, along with me and let's just take a look. Okay guys, so I brought with me my trusty shears here. As I go around, I show you the plants that I have. It's gonna give me an opportunity to look and see if I need to pull any dead leaves or anything like that. So let's just jump right into it. So let's take a look down here. As you can see, I have my little array of flowers. Over here, I have my um, terrarium, which I do have. You see this dead leaf in here, you guys. I think that was one of my Miranda cuttings that kind of like died off, but I do have like a little baby philodendron in there. I have my Pialea, which is growing well, as well as my Peperomia, which is pretty good. Um, so I'll probably just pull this dead leaf out a little later. Over here I have my um, Monstera, what is this, um, Stamliana. The variegated version is growing very well up on this um, moss pole that I made. Um, and it's really hooking in there real good and I kind of chopped it and pretty much put some more back into the soil. So um, I'm hoping that this growing season it will grow up tall. Over here, of course, is my poinsettia. I just shared with you guys in an earlier video as being one of my top favorite plants for the month of May. Beside it, I have my beautiful variegated um, burl marks, which is not too variegated, but it is giving me subtle variegation right here. I'm not quite sure if I need to give it more light, but I think it's getting ample light because as you can see, you guys, it's getting all this light from my CNC light, so very bright light. Okay, so this right here is my philodendron, I think Angustatum. As you can see, it is really taking off with this beautiful new growth right here. And the leaves, this is the last current new growth. And look at the leaf, you guys, it's really beautiful. I just love the arrow shaped head that this leaf, these leaves provide. And this one right here, you guys, look, you see how it's turning yellow. Um, and that's common when this is, uh, this is like one of the first leaves. So you know what? I'm just going to cut it off right now because I don't even want, um, the plant to focus any energy on this. Let's take a look up here. This is my, what you wouldn't know from looking at it, but it is a Marble Queen Pothos. It's not very marbling right now because it's, I'm assuming it's not getting the proper light, but as you can see right here, it does have some subtle variegation a little bit. Um, and I think that is coming from the Sansy light, but it's okay. I like how it's like a subtle blend with the um, light and then the dark green. So it's okay. I like the way it's trailing. I had already cut it once before, but um, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna cut it anymore. I'm just gonna leave it and let it just trail. Over here is a mixture, you guys. There's several plants in here. From the droopiness of the leaves, I need to give it a drink. But this is a mixture of um, Marble Queen Pothos with a regular green Pothos. And then my Mandula, which is incorporated right here. But I'm seeing that this leaf is yellowed. So, good opportunity for me to snip, snip. And when I get finished this video, I'm actually going to give this a drink because the leaves, you see you guys how the leaves are droopy. Um, one thing that I did notice by putting these plants together is that my Marble Queen Pothos get a little bit more thirstier quicker than the Manjula, which is interesting concept. Down here, you guys, is I, I believe it's like a berry type of Syngonium. This is all that's left right now, but... Um, I don't know what happened really you guys I think um, I forgot even though this is a self-watering pot by the way but I did miss a couple of times of actually filling the reservoir up and because of that it kind of took a hit and as you can see you guys it's not that many leaves left but it is trying to grow back I still love it nonetheless over here I have this beautiful neon um, heart leaf um, philodendron um, I kind of like I think I cut it or I pimped it up 
to give it a fuller appearance but I really like this I got this from the thrift store and I just have it sitting in here and I like the way it's hanging my goal is to try to kind of like hide this little ugly sign that's <laughs> hanging on the wall but um, I really love that pop of color right there over here you can't go wrong with my beautiful my beautiful philodendron micans um, I just love the velvetiness of the leaves and you see right here you guys I think I did it is in a terracotta pot but I do believe I did forget to water it one time um, a little bit too long and that's why you see these leaves right here which I'm gonna cut now but I see it the leaves will dry up on you if you let it go too long without a water and look that one just fell off and that's kind of what I did you know this is part of the plant care you guys I haven't had a chance to really go through my collection and take a look at it um, see what leaves and things I may need to cut off so um, yeah you see that that's really crispy but that's part of being a plant parent right the good bad and ugly but ooh, <laughs> and that leaf fell off too <laughs> but that's okay that's a common thing you know don't feel bad like I said I haven't really looked as much as I wanted to at these plants but it's a good thing that I am taking you around to show you because it's giving me an opportunity free time to actually do some snip snips so let's go continue over here is another syngonium that I have which is very easy going um, I've been just making sure that I keep the top inch of the soil um, moist but not wet and it seems I do not skip a beat in regards to watering this plant for sure I typically water it when one inch of the soil is dry down below right here and I need to cut a couple of leaves that have died off these are just some proper gation of my philodendron oxypapensi and you guys seen the mother plant actually in um, my sunroom so you know I think I probably should put this in a brighter light since they are propagation so that's kind of my fault right there but anyway beside, underneath of it is my beautiful aglaonema chocolate really easy care haven't had any problems with this plant at all and it is starting to grow a new leaf beside it right here is another variety of aglaonemas I think I have like a at a rose or i don't know at a james maybe i'm saying the name wrong correct correct me in the comments you guys and then i have this other pink variety i decided to pot it up in this um beautiful like burgundy reddish pot but i do see that some of the leaves are turning a bit and you know you guys y'all let me know because that's what i've been experiencing lately with my aglaonemas their leaves kind of like fading in color like that <laughs> And I don't know if it's because maybe I'm letting it go too long without watering because I know aglaonemas do not like to be watered a lot. So I try my best to make sure that it's not being a root rot type of situation. I think maybe I'm giving it too much water. I might just let this need to let that air out. I'm not sure. But anyway, still beautiful nonetheless. Over here, you guys, is my beautiful prideful. Um, what is this? This is a philodendron variety, you guys. Um, I think it's the golden goddess. And this is practically about three feet high. And when I got it, it probably was like a foot tall. This thing really took off in the first year that I had it. It kind of slowed its growth a little bit. But, I mean, even if it did, you guys, look at how full and tall it is. It's so beautiful. Can't even get mad, but these are the new leaves. I need to tie it down onto um, this Coco Quar moss pole. Um, like I said, I'm just using these poles, you guys, just to hold the plant up, No, nothing more than that. Over here, I have this beautiful snake plant, or I guess what they're calling it now, classifying it to be Dracaena, I'm not sure. The varieties, I'm not up on my variety names when it comes to the Dracaenas or snake plants but this is also this right here is my bantu sensation well at least one of them i have it currently sitting in a small amount of water because i was just trying to re-establish the root system and i probably will either pot it up by itself once 
the roof system is strong enough or I feel like it is strong enough. We'll see. Um, right here is my silvery Anskin Dapses. I have it in this very pretty face planter, as you can see. Um, and it's really a lot of them is real, just matte in color, almost like jade. But only some leaves are subtle with the silvery tips. But I still love it. I think it's a good statement piece. Okay, so right here is my... Guys, this is such a common name, and yet I drew a blank. Can you believe it? My Raven ZZ, you guys. Ha! <laughs> kind of crazy. Um, this is the newest leaf that is grown, as you can see, because you can always tell. They come out green, and as it matures, the leaves turn a little dark. I've been debating on whether or not if I should put this plant outside um, for the growing season just to promote some more growth. If you look inside the pot, you guys, and I probably need to cover the soil, you see the rhizomes? I don't think the rhizomes really should be showing like that in the pot. Y'all comment below and let me know if that's okay or not, or if I need to put it either in a deeper pot or just add some more top dressing over there. But anyway, over here is another um, snake plant variety of mine, or Dracaena. I don't know. I, my game with the snake plants, they say they're not killable, but for some reason, you guys, I'm starting to kill them, which is weird they're drying up on me i think i'm taking them for granted and not giving them as much water um, as i feel that they need but it's still just a learning curve for me in regards to certain snake plants over here i have this i guess struggling but not really struggling but my pialia friendship plant um i lost a lot of leaves because this thing is thirsty all the time but i do have it in um the wick and grow and I've been trying to make sure that I keep this pot filled slightly with water so that it won't dry out but still a beautiful plant mm. right here beside it is my Sinanthe um, Burromarxii I just showed this plant to you um, when I did my repot of my other Calathea plant um, still stunningly beautiful and as you can see it's it is, gets dampened light from my window as well as the sandy light. Over here is my Florida green. As you can see right here, I cut it and the pieces are in my propagation station that y'all may see in my sunroom from earlier videos. When they root, I do plan on repotting it back into this pot. Down below, you guys, I decided to put this on the floor. To, I don't know, just to kind of like Fill in the space a little bit, but this is um, my Aglaonema Madonna. I think it's Madonna. But I love the leaves. I love the color. I love the white stems. It's been very easy going. The only thing is, for some reason, the large leaves they do droop like that, and I don't know why, but it's okay. Okay, I almost forgot about this plant, you guys. That's hanging beside my um, Philodendron <coughs> micas. But this is my other philodendron brazil that i have hanging in my home and as you can see it's just starting to trail and look at that you guys i love the brazil you see how it's subtle with the lime green it's so beautiful it's like one of my favorite easy going plants over here is multiple i think two maybe three propagations of my hoya maculophala i kind of just rooted it and it started growing and i just decided to go ahead and just combine my cuttings and put it on this um homemade wall hanging plaque thing <laughs> and i love it it's doing very very well one thing that i did notice is my sansy light is on this side and some of the leaves has been turning to reach the light so i don't know if that's a sign that i need to just move this thing all together and give it more light but in spite of that it has flowered for me inside the house these are multiple peduncles some has bloomed and some have not but um it's getting enough light to give me the blooms which is amazing 
So down here is my two big babies right here. This is, of course, um, Big Bertha. I call her <laughs> my um, original barrel marks. Um, as you can see, this thing is tall, man. It has to be at least three feet, but it is sprung out, and I just love it. And I'm just letting it, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just letting it go ahead and do its thing. Beside it is my other big bird anthurium with these beautiful big leaves. And as y'all can see, I had it in some um, semi-hydroponic at one time, but I decided to put it up in soil. And since I've been doing that, it still has been growing. The leaves are beautiful. This is the new growth right here. So I love it. Um, most of the leaves haven't turned like this dark reddish like hue as they're known for doing, but it's still a statement piece nonetheless. Up here, you guys, is my beautiful, um, what is this? This is a philodendron Tahiti, um, I guess, AKA Mayo Eye. I'm not sure, multiple names for this plant. Um, this was one of the newest leaves along with this baby right here. This one will also get a little bit bigger as it hardens up, but tropical vibes all the way. Beside it is my small little, you guys know that I've been struggling here and there with my Monstera Silta Bacana, but this is just the cutting that I have left. Um, it's liking it so far here and I'm satisfied with what I see. I'm just going to leave it be. This is another one of my philodendron. This is the um, Pothos Pearls and Jade, actually. Um, one that I brought and I'm just going to cut that off. And I see another dead leaf. Oh, it actually came off. So I probably have been... Uh, from the crispiness of the leaves, probably been underwatering this plant. But if you look at it, you guys, it is still beautifully full nonetheless. I still need to clip a, another leaf. I'll do that a little bit off camera. Now down here, you guys, is an array of plants. Start on the back right side. This is a, a succulent of some kind, you guys, and I have to have it underneath of here to get this bright light that's directly from my CNC light in order to maintain it. But I really like this part, how it's grown. Some of the leaves fell off, you guys, and I stuck it right into the dirt. And I think this actually transformed from one of the leaves that I put in the soil, so that's pretty cool. Um, beside it, I have... Um, What's, which one is this? Why can I not think of a name? It's a snake plant, you guys. Y'all know the name of it. I'm sorry. It's just not coming to my memory right now. And I'm going to probably kick myself because it'll pop in when it comes time to edit. edit I'm quite sure. But it's a snake plant. And this is another one that needs bright light in order to get that nice green or mint-like color. Down here, you guys, I'm trying something different. This is my, um, uh, this is my Anthurium Pallidiforum. You guys, if you remember my Equigenera unboxing, this thing was not working out well at all, and it's slow to grow for me, but luckily I was able to at least get these three beautiful leaves that's growing right here. And I'm trying something different, you guys, right here. Um, I'm trying to see if I can promote some root growth or maybe I saw a lot of growing eyes along this part And so I don't know in theory. I'm thinking why not try sphagnum moss? I used a little bit of rooting hormone to see if I can promote those growing eyes to possibly shoot out Some more leaves because if I can get them to start mer Emerging like this. I think we'll finally be off to a good start right here. I have cuttings of this is a philodendron variety, has no leaves. I can't remember the name. I don't know if it's like my varicosum one or whatever the case is, but well, I, I guess I'll just have to wait and see. And I went on and I just snipped my Trandoscantia and then look because it's starting to get a little leggy, a little bit of uh, not looking as pretty as I like it. So I did do a lot of cutting and removing dead leaves. This is just one of the cuttings. Over here, you guys, is my baby beautiful, um, um, philodendron white princess um, I got this in a very juvenile form and as you can see if you look in the just look at the stalk of the 
plant itself. There's so many growths. But the beautiful part about this plant that I do want to point out is the variegation is very stable in this plant. So if I'm able to actually get it to grow bigger leaves, this plant will be amazing. Okay guys, this is my other philodendron pearls and jade. This is the original first plant that I brought. Um, I did cut it. It was trailing long at one point, but I actually did cut a long piece of it and I gave it to a friend. And I'm just seeing these dead leaves. This is what happens when you forget to water your plants. They will crisp up on you and that's okay. Okay. Yeah, all good. But I love this plant. Like I said, it's one of my first beginning plants that I had. And you know what I recommend if you are a person that really want to look for a colorful plant but easy going, I recommend this. Um, look at it. It's beautiful, isn't it? Down below, beneath it, you guys, I have one, two different varieties of Syngoniums. You know I've been trying my hand with it. Um, on this one, I've been losing a lot of the lower leaves. I got it tied up tremendously, but look at the different vibes it gives you. It gives you a batik vibe, and then it gives you uh, some kind of like a mint vibe. I really don't know what variety this is, but... It's still beautiful nonetheless. The cousin and friend of this plant over here is another Syngonium. Um, this is the Neon, Pink Neon, I believe. Neon Robusta, I believe, is what they call it. Look, that's another leaf I need to cut. And by the way, you guys, this plant is definitely maturing because you see how it's unfurling and the, the ears. <laughs> The ears are coming out. That's how I know that it is starting to mature into, as opposed to this, you notice how the ears look so much smaller and a little bit closer together. Whereas with this new growth right here is so much wider and spaced apart. So it's definitely maturing. Um, I just have to be really careful with the watering. I have to be on time with my watering right here. Over here, this baby that's curling up is my small specimen of my Skindapsis. Um, I believe that's the Silver Hero. Um, I got a good deal on the plant. I can't remember exactly where I got it from, but I didn't pay a lot for it at all. But um, I did notice it is one of my slowest growing Skindapsis, and that's okay. Um, but I do believe that once this plant takes, start growing, it's really gonna take off. Beside it, you guys, is my Silver Sword. Um, Remember, I think I showed you guys that I potted it up together with my, my propagations and then I cut some off and this right here is just an indicator of or indication that the plants that I potted in the soil is just acclimating to its new home and that's okay. But you gotta love the silver leaves on this plant, it's very beautiful. Over here, you guys, I'm gonna try to turn it around so you can see it, it, let's see. I don't even know if I can, can I turn it around? Yeah, there it is. So y'all can get a better look at this. This thing is growing wild, you guys, but I love it. I'm, I'm really loving those pointy leaves or fingers, and this is my philodendron glad, glad hands. And I haven't had this plant long. Y'all may remember when I introduced this plant to y'all, but this thing has been growing for me ever since I've gotten it. This is a new growth. It's a new leaf right here. Um, very beautiful. I have a new growth down the bottom right here. If y'all can see that. And then this is also a new leaf that's trying to emerge. But this thing has been growing for me nonstop. Over here is my Syngonium Frosted Heart. You guys, I, I don't think I've been keeping up with the watering of the moss pole to get it to actually attach to here. So that's an error on my end. But the leaves are still stunningly beautiful. Um, my goal is still, I'm not going to give up, you know. Never give up. 
<laughs> but I'm not gonna give up because I'm trying to make um, the leaves much bigger, but still beautiful. I always keep it turned towards the light, this window. It doesn't get very harsh light. It's like a medium to low mild indirect light. Over here is my beautiful, this is my Aglaonema Silver Bay. This thing is growing as you can see. Um, there's another new growth. And I believe I have a new shoot actually coming out the soil, but you guys probably won't be able to see it. It's just too much going on down here and being covered by a lot of stuff, but that's okay. Um, down here, that's hiding. This is another philodendron. And you guys, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head enough. Let me see, actually, it's good to keep these tags, right? This is my philodendron rub ruba juvenile. Um, yeah, I can't even grasp the actual, I wish I knew the actual name outside of that. It's growing just not vigorously for me. I am thinking about taking it out of this Lekka though and putting it in the soil to see how it does. Not 100% sure yet, I'm just gonna have to wait and see. Beside it is my big baby, this Philodendron Gloriosum. You guys that I just showed you, these leaves are massive. I just, I just love this plant so much and I always root for my underdog plants because this plant literally started off with nothing. It seemed like it was going to the RIP room for the plant society, but it made a comeback nonetheless, so super excited. Over behind this mess, wildness, that's my philodendron um, Birkins. Um, I just kind of put it a little bit closer to the window because I wanted to see if it would grow. But I might actually, because I've been debating, I'm thinking about putting that plant actually in my sunroom because I want to try to, it's growing but it's slow growing and the leaves are smaller even though it is maintaining the beautiful white streaks. But I just want to actually promote a little bit more growth. So I think I might just put it in my sunroom this season and see what happens. Beside it, you guys, is my Monstera. Um, is this, what? Oh gosh, why well, I can't think, I always forget these names when I be talking to you guys about this plant. My Subpinata, that's it. My Monstera Subpinata where I think I did already show y'all what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to root it right here. I'm doing some air layering so I can cut it and put it back into the soil. But this right here is already trying to unfurl, you guys. It just, this is a subtly beautiful plant in my personal opinion. Comment below, let me know if y'all have this variety in your home. And turn it back around so I can get some beautiful light. This thing is leaning too because of the weight of the but I'm not gonna worry about it. Up above, up above you guys is just my traditional, you can't go wrong with the all green pothos. But you see how it's trailing so beautifully. I do believe it's time for me to really give it a good hard pruning, propagate and put her back in the top because she is balding up there and I kind of want to fill her up. I could try to do the pin method, but sometimes the pin method is like a touch and go method for me. Sometimes it's not successful. So I think I might actually just chop this baby up and um, put it in some water because check it out, you guys. Beautiful thing about pothos, they have already some great starting points for um, roots to grow. So I already know with this kind of robust system they already have, it would take probably maybe like two weeks tops for it to even actually start growing roots. Over here, you guys, is my beautiful mandarin orange spider plant. Guys, this plant is gorgeous, but I see some crispy leaves. That's what they, this is what they do when you don't water them on time. <laughs> so, and it's just the lower leaves, so I think it's okay. And then I have one that's yellow. So, you know, maybe also too, they could, 
I'm gonna double check, but sometimes not only do they crisp up, and but they also be like limp like this. It could be a case of not enough water or too much water. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on this one. Right here, you guys, is this juvenile. I don't even know what this is anymore, you guys, to be honest with you. I know it's a philodendron, but what plant type, I couldn't even tell you. I had this plant literally for almost three years. Exactly the same size, you guys. It has done absolutely nothing for me. So I don't know if I am just fell out of love with this plant. I just give it water so that it can exist, but I'm not really even fighting for it. I don't know why. Maybe because it's showing me that it's not fighting for me. I don't know, but uh, I don't know if it's a... Uh, Congo green honestly guys I've had the plant so damn going long I don't even know what it is anymore but I do know I wish it would open up these leaves this leaf, this has been stuck forever whatever's going on right here and I don't know if I should missed it I really don't know but whatever it is I just keep it over here in the corner um I don't know I don't know if that's the black sheep or the <laughs> plant family that I have it's kind of crazy beside it is my syngonium um the, the pink confetti syngonium. Oh boy, trying to remember these names, you guys, be something else. <laughs> but as you can see, the speckling on there, such a beautiful plant, and I love this new growth right here that's just coming in. I definitely try to make sure I do not forget a watering on this because I really want to get it large. Down in the corner right there is my Sansevieria uh, fernwood. Dracaena, whatever you want to call it, however you feel comfortable with the classification. And it's just chilling out there in the corner. It doesn't need much. It doesn't scream, shout, or holler. And every once in a while, I'll go by and say, hello, and it says hi. So, you know, we're good. <laughs> Over here is my... I know I'm being silly, you guys. Oh, it must be time to almost wrap it up. But over here is my beautiful Cardi Road. Syngonium, this is my pride and joy right here. This is a beautiful plant. Look at them backs. Bam! Beautiful. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Love it. Over here, you guys, is my sad plant. I just showed y'all this one. It's trying to make a comeback. And this is what I meant, you guys. If y'all saw that last video I put out about this. It's supposed to be a variegated cast iron non-killable plant but clearly i can kill it so um i'm trying to make sure it stay alive i just have it in water because honestly i didn't know what else to do and i have it right underneath my sansy light with the anticipation of promoting more and healthier growth but keep y'all fingers crossed you know i'm still being optimistic beside it right here real quick before we move you guys this is my painted lady. As you can see, this um, newest leaf starting to show some speckling. This plant needs a whole lot of light in order to pull it off or bring that color out. As you can see, all the lower leaves, you guys, is just the traditional green. And that's because I was not giving it a lot of light. I had it, I had it slightly like in this um, corner where it was getting just medium light. And I need to give it a good drink after the, at the end of this video, but this is my skin. Dapsis Exotica. Yeah, I believe, yeah, Exotica. And um, I love this plant, you guys. I usually wait for it to curl up, believe it or not, before I give it a drink. Um, we have that loving communication between one another, so I really love this plant. Down below is my, um, what is this? <sighs> my put. Tira Aquatica, or you know what, you guys? I'm gonna try to put the name on the screen because I don't know how to pronounce this, <laughs> but it's a money tree nonetheless. And this thing, I don't know, I've been having a whole lot of problems off and on. Like it was very full and lush, and as you can see, I'm barely working off of just one stem with possible uh, six leaves right here. Um, I've really been making sure that I don't give it a lot of drink, a lot of water because of the. Um, large stems at the bottom I know the trunks hold the water so y'all if y'all can let me know judging from the crispiness of the leaves could I be underwatering this plant um it is directly underneath my fancy light maybe I'm not giving it enough water to support the energy that it's using I don't know you guys comment below let me know 
down beside it, you guys, is another one of my Bantu Sensations. Um, I just have it right here because I don't want it to lose the color that it has. Okay, you guys, this is my Epiprimnum um, Panada, the variegated version. And I love the subtleness of the variegated leaves. And I'm so excited about this particular plant because the roots are trying to latch onto the moss pole. And I actually cut it. If y'all remember me showing you the last time, it was growing tall, but I actually cut it. It had a very good root system. And I put it back into the pot and reattached it to this moss pole. I swiped out the moss pole, so I can't wait. I think it's right now, it, I may have shocked it a little bit, so it's getting acclimated to its home before it actually starts attaching and hopefully start growing even more. This is another one of my um, heart leaf neon, heart leaf philodendron. Um, I love it so much. I have two. I've always been debating whether or not if I should just combine and make one plant and have a full pot of it. But I like subtle splashes of color up against the white walls in my home. Um, so I may just leave it separated. Below is my Fascia Japonica, which is playing games with me, you guys. We have this love-hate relationship going on right now. Well, right now, it's loving me because it's giving me these beautiful new growth. If you see the stem down below... It was when it wasn't loving me so much and it was um, losing a lot of its leaves. But I try my best to maintain the water. This thing does not want you to forget about watering. So I've been debating on whether or not if I should even put it in a self-watering pot. I think that might actually save the day. But so far so good. It's still, it's still hanging in there with me. Right here, you guys, is another... Um, Dracaena or Sansevieria Bonacle, I believe. And I think I may need to give it some water. I'm not sure because I'm starting to see it wrinkle a little bit. And that sometimes is an indicator that it needs a drink and the soil is extremely dry. But I do let my snake plants completely dry out. Right here. I don't even know if you can see it. But I'm going to pull it out. Oh, I can't. This thing says no. Don't be shy. The people want to see you. Okay, so right here is my, um, what is this? My money tree, money plant. Um, is this the Peppermoides? Pilea Peppermoides? I always butcher that name, so I kind of like just stick with the money tree. But this is what's left of it, guys. As you can see, all these stalks, um, all the leaves just fell off over time. This is another one where you have to get the water in just right. Um, but believe it or not, even though the leaves on the bottom fell off, I like the look of it. I mean, I can see why they call it a UFO plant, but it's it's a different plant nonetheless. It's one of them plants that was hot when it was hot, and now I don't even think anybody's really talking about it, but it's still beautiful. And completely down here on the floor is another beautiful pink um, aglaonema. You guys, I saw this. I think in Lowe's or something. I can't even remember. One of them hardware stores, you guys. And I saw the color of it. Could not deny it. Had to get this very beautiful plant. Hasn't really given me any problems, but I do know to maintain that color, you do have to give it a little bit more light than what aglaonemas are traditionally known for. This right here is a philodendron species that I can't think of the name of you guys but I don't know I just think of some form of vegetable when I look at these leaves like I don't know it's so beautiful like lettuce or something like that and it's been growing vigorously non-stop for me and the name rubbed off so you know what I think this might be you know what, I think this is the Angulostatum. I'm so sorry. I believe earlier on in the video, I made a mention of another philodendron being the Angulostatum. But I think now that I think about it, and I'm looking at the plant right now, it's the St. Martinese. That one was the St. Martinese, and this is the Angulostatum philodendron. And I'm doing the same thing with the air layer. I know this looks kind of dumb. I think, in my personal opinion, I think this is kind of dumb air layering it up against a sphagnum moss pole when I could just easily tie it. But it 
it wasn't attaching and I want to do it quicker. I think me doing it this way will promote roots quicker so I can cut this and put it back into the pot because if you can see down here all this stem all this is stem so I kind of want to put something in the pot to kind of cover it and I'm just going to cut this off right here and I don't need this leaf either cutting that off beside it you guys and this is another plant I just noticed I have to give it some water as you can see right here, the leaves are curling. Well, this is my prideful um, jade skin daps, as you guys. You know, sometimes I can really be an underwaterer. I'm not gonna do anything with that, I'll leave that one be. Um, but guys, this plant is pretty tall. I have it on this stake, which is probably like a six foot stake, I believe. And I'm a pretty tall female, but it's like, has to be at least thinking four, maybe four and a half feet tall. So I really want to get it to just, just grow, grow, grow. Okay, you guys, so now we're in our kitchen and I have two aglaonemas. I believe this is the white Dalmatian. And then this one is the aglaonema frozen. Both of these aglaonemas was giving me some kind of trouble and I decided to go ahead and cut my losses short, save what I could, and I put it in semi-hydroponics. Ever since I've done that, it has made a comeback I need to probably tape it up because it's leaning or it's leaning towards the light but I love these plants and they look kind of cool I think mixed together it's almost like it was intentional but it wasn't so kind of worked out up here sitting on top of my refrigerator I have this Christmas cactus um, it's bloomed once it hasn't bloomed for me yet and I've just been having it up here it hasn't been giving me any issues. It's been very easy care. Uh, maybe it will bloom for me when the holiday season come back around. I'm not sure. But it does have like the buds. It's been doing a lot of that. But it hasn't been maturing or developing into anything. Over here you guys. And let me just swing it around. So you can see the totality of it. This is my. Um, Pothos. It's the. The golden one, I believe. And because I'm giving it more light, the color is starting to come out. Because initially it was just all green until I decided to move it here. But I really love it, this beautiful speckling. Very beautiful. And it's just chilling over here in the window. Near the window, rather. I'm going to show you guys... Um, this is like over here before you go into my sunroom. I have these and I particularly left it the way it is because I wanted to share something with you guys. This right here is my macrophylla, one of my um, propagation, successful propagations where it had literally I think two leaves and it just recently this year grew this leaf along with this leaf which isn't even really kind of like stiffened up yet. But I like that subtle of the green variegation. That's quite different from what you would see in the variegated version of the um, macrophylla. Beside it is also my cutting or propagation of my um, pothos enjoy. Um, very beautiful and delicate. But I also wanted to talk to you guys about this and this. I, I Specifically left it like this because I wanted to share something with you guys. This is just a traditional snake plant, which as you can see is on the verge of dying. Along with this was a cutting, which is dead, and I'm is uh, was my philodendron, philodendron. I'm sorry, my peperomia hope. I guess it was no hope for this one right here. But what I've noticed is I brought these off of Amazon. I can't remember the brand. But these are two porous. It was designed for, they said, succulents. But honestly, you guys, I like I said, I tried the snake plant. If I don't know, don't even know if a succulent would survive in it. It's way too porous. It's way too small, in my personal opinion. And I had to water it like nonstop all the time, even for a snake plant. And that's the reason why both of these plants has declined. So I wanted to share that tidbit with you. If y'all happen to see this on 
um, Amazon, y'all may want to think twice about purchasing these. Um, I, the, it, I had a third one, and that was another thing. I had a third one, but if you look at this one, how it has a crack, it literally starts cracking after over time as you give it water. And the third one that I had completely cracked and split in half, and I had to wind up throwing it in the trash. So I really wouldn't, you know, not, I never try to um, down anybody or any business organization, anything like that, but I really... My personal opinion i wouldn't recommend buying these so if y'all see these just you know kind of like stay away from them so i'm pretty much just gonna dump these out and if anything if i put anything in here it might be a fake faux plant just for decoration on here but i i do love the fact that it is magnetized but these right here are very handy i love these i got these two um uh, like i already told y'all from thrifting and I believe I paid maybe like 50 cents, maybe a dollar for each. But if you go online now, I've seen these two being sold for like 30 bucks. So I think I got one heck of a deal off of it. But um, if the price of these come down, I would actually buy a couple of more and just have them like on the side because it's right directly across from this window and it's getting very beautiful lighting. So this is a definitely good buy right here. Now I'm going to start my window seal of my kitchen where I have just some variations of beautiful things going on here, you guys. I'm going to start with this beautiful lipstick plant. It's supposed to be a variegated version, you guys, but it's extremely, extremely subtle on the variegation. I'm going to show you a leaf. I don't even know if the camera is going to pick it up. That's how subtle it is. You can see that slightly slight white. Um, I don't know why it's not coming out. I literally have it, as you can see, by this window. It's getting some nice light, even though I do have a very big um, tree right here that's blocking a lot of it, but I, I don't know. But it doesn't matter if it gets variegated green, if not, but I love the funky way that it's growing. It's beautiful. Underneath of it is my red Maranta, um, the prayer plant, my old g of my plant family and it's just chilling man and it's just been flowering and growing and flowering and growing but i have lost a lot of leaves because i have been forgetting to water this on time and that's my fault so i'm definitely trying to stay on top of it though because it's one of my very important plants beside it right here you guys is my little tiny um raindrop peperomia i cut it down because the main plant was becoming so leggy i didn't like the aesthetic of it so i chopped it off and i have that currently in water so my goal is to actually put it back in the soil but when i cut it it just started promoting all this growth right here so very beautiful beside it is my cressula jade and just looking at it the thinness of the leaves i definitely need to give it water um, the leaves are feeling soft that's another indicator that i need to give it a good drink um, but i really love this plant i had this plant maybe for maybe a year now um, so I'm just letting it chill. I just actually up potted it or repotted it about a few weeks ago because it was root bound. And so hopefully I'm hoping in this growing season because I changed it, it'll start growing really good. Down here I have a Hoya um, Coriana Black and I already have some cuttings that's propagating you guys. And I'm gonna, I wanted to show you this. It has a beginning form of a peduncle right here. I'm just gonna try to see if it's gonna form and blast off if not and it drops off you guys i'm thinking about actually cutting it again because you see all these this root system right here i think i'm gonna cut this and probably propagate it but i'll see what the peduncle does first beside it is just a group of cuttings this right here you guys can you believe it this is a philodendron mame um this is what's left of it me and the mame has not been friends at all from day one we have been battling it out scratching each other eyes out and I just, it's, it's saying, let me die. And I say, no, you won't. And so, <laughs> so we've been battling it out. And I don't know if, if anything's going to become out of it, but um, it's something's growing from it. So I guess I can't complain, right? Beside it is some other cuttings of my Trandiscanti and Nanook. And this is also a cutting which of uh, my Pothos um, Pearl and Jade, really. Um, and this is all that it is. And I think it's cool. I want to show you guys. I'm trying to pull it out. You see the root system so long, but 
I don't know. Should I just go ahead and put it in a pot? Or should I just cut it again and stick this in the water to get it rooted? Because it's so long and literally it was just completely a wet stick. So I was, imagine my surprise when this just, it just grew out of the side. So I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all would do for this one. Would y'all cut it and put it back in the water or not? But anyway, let's move to the plant beside it. The next one is my beautiful, um, the spineless cactus. This is the one that I found at CVS that people were saying was being sold at CVS. I really do like the fact that I can really touch it and enjoy the texture without killing my fingers or getting pricked. Very beautiful plant, child and um, I guess animal friendly plant too. You don't have to worry about your cat or dog whacking it and winding up, they get whacked right back. And that, you know, that's crazy, but <laughs> moving right along. The next one you guys is, um, this is the variegated version of the devil's backbone. And what I've noticed though, as y'all can see, it's literally pushed up against this window. So it's getting ample light, but I guess the devil in it no pun intended, the devil in it, is having the lower leaves fall, and now I'm really seeing that devil spine for what it is, as crooked as all get out, but I love the plant because it's stunningly beautiful nonetheless. Ahem, moving right along, you guys. You know, it's time for me to almost wrap it up when I start getting silly, but here we go. We have this beautiful Hoya Bilobata, which also looked like the Hoya Bertinae. I don't know if that's one and the same or if it's two different names, but I'm glad that it is starting to grow. This is one of the plants I had in my bedroom and it wasn't getting enough light to successfully start it growing. I moved it here and then voila, it is starting to actually try to grow. And I just right now want to promote growth. I'm not even into any flower promotion right here. It's very beautiful. I love the little edges that it gives me. Um, beautiful plant. Down below right here, you guys, is my, um, this is a, my Maranta Burl Marks. I love this plant. This plant was declining. I wound up re-putting it in water and re-establishing roots. And now it's saying, hey, I want to live. I love it. But <laughs> next beside it is another propagation I got going on. And I'm actually going to give to a friend. This is my variegated version of my Maranta Lucanora. Um, very beautiful. And I have this little sad clipping, which I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Is um, my Oxypapense. The thing has just been growing out of control. Beside it, you guys, is just multiple propagations. This is my... Um, what is this? This is my Aglaonema Burmese, I think. Then I also have the Raindrop Peperomia I was telling you about, about as far as the one I just showed y'all earlier. And this right here is my Red Margin uh, Peperomia. Um, it, it was declining for a reason, you guys, and I took a look. It didn't have all no root system. Put it in this water, and I'm just waiting to see. I still have a couple of Oxypapenses coming out of there, so... I'm just letting all of that root and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it. Beside it is my good old friend, Guinea. This is Peperomia Guinea. I love her so much because look at the beautiful pink hue. She never gives me any problems. Me and her get along. You know, we always dap it up when I come in the kitchen in the morning and she is just growing so great and I just love her so much. Beside it is a cutting of my Monstera Peru. And this is the leaves is growing. This leaf right here, you guys, is a different color. You see that, like, light color in it? I don't know, is that from the sun? It's only, this is the only leaf that has done it. I know it's not sick or anything like that, but I think it's pretty cool. Beside it, you guys, is just a variety of cacti that I have. Couldn't really tell you the names of them all. I just know that the gray hairy one is the old man cactus. Now, y'all let me know what the spine this one, the dangerously beautiful one in the middle is, along with the one that's on the right. The one on the right, you guys, I've had that the longest. I want to say I've had it for at least two years, but they were so small and dainty. I got both of the two ones that's on the end at um, like a Lowe's or Home Depot, but the middle one, you guys, was actually at a CVS, which I couldn't even believe. I thought it was amazing fine for a pharmacy. Never knew that they sold plants, but I guess they're getting on that plant bus. So I really like the arrangement that I have going on. My last one in the kitchen, you guys, of course, would be 
be fitting is my beautiful coffee plant. Who does not love coffee? I mean, I do, and I get a kick out of caffeine too. So I guess this is a great plant to have in your kitchen. When I got it, the plant had to be this high. This high where my hand is. All of this just grew. And I've had this plant, you know, I definitely I've had this plant for over a year. I never cease to amaze me. You just gotta be on top of the watering. Um, you water this plant when at least two inches of the soil will start to dry, you give it a good drink. If not, you will definitely see the leaves droop. And also, they're not very forgiving. The lower leaves will crisp up on you. Okay, guys. So, I just showed y'all this area earlier in an early video. But here we are in my bedroom again, and of course we have this beautiful neon uh, pothos that's finally trailing and merging on with my heartleaf philodendron. Um, I'm anticipating the fact, I can't wait to actually have this color cross over. I think it's really gonna be a signature piece in the bedroom. Over here, you guys, is my beautiful Crinkle 8 Hoya. Um, I had this plant in the sunroom but it started crisping up. I think the sun was a little bit too intense. Brought it in here and it seems to be doing fine. What is this? My Peperomia Scandens, just a regular version. And I really love the fact that it is a Peperomia, but the leaves are heart shaped. And I do love how wild and crazy it is growing. Over here, you guys, which I can see is a, some yellow leaves. And I'm gonna have to either pull or cut. But this is my Cebu Blue Pothos, you guys. I've had this plant for probably going on almost two years now, and it wasn't a four inch planter. Let's see. And look at it, it's so beautiful. And it's just facing the window, so um, I don't know. I love it though. Beautiful, beautiful. Down here, you guys, is, I guess, my mistletoe cactus. I just talked about this, you guys, and I'll let y'all know that how I replaced this plant with my Peperomia prostrata that I had in here. That wasn't doing well, and right now it's not even doing well in the sunroom, so I don't know what's going on. But ever since I brought it in here, it's been taking off and growing and giving me all these beautiful new growth points. I really, I really am growing fond of this plant. It's beautiful, nonetheless. Hoya Chelsea is starting to try to trail and it just started growing the um, I guess what are these just stems for the leaves to grow out it hasn't been growing very vigorously for me but I'm patient in regards to this plant because I've really been wanting it for a long time and I have brought it as a small specimen so I can be patient with the growth here right here is my sterling silver skin dabses um, this is another one from what I can see needs another drink and I may have to actually transport it out of this pot But since I had it in this terracotta pot you guys have noticed how thirsty it's become and I have to water it a lot I don't think it's root bound. I think maybe the pot is just too porous for it But another thing too, you guys is a very beautiful plant and even though I do have it sitting in front of this window right here It is not a fast grower for me, which is okay because I think if it was to grow fast, I wouldn't even know what to do if it was to start trailing on the floor here. Now, another fast, now a fast grower of mine is this beautiful thing right here. You see that I have it hooked up here. And this is another one of my philodendron micans, you guys. This thing is ever growing. Okay, you guys, so right here I have two plants. This one is my silver streak spathophyllum. I put two plants in here and I have it in this beautiful self-watering pot which is a game changer for this plant because as you can see it's not very forgiving if you miss water it will crisp up and give you crispy tips like this but I do believe too that this is coming from maybe a lack of humidity it may need a little bit more humidity than what I have going on in my bedroom but it's fine I like it to be in my bedroom so we're just going to figure it out beside it is my beautiful philodendron gold caulkin as you can see, I put it on this bamboo stick because it was starting to wobble a lot and it was leaning. So I love this plant because 
it does have a lot of growth points here 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 and it's trying to grow right here I initially had this kind of like laying low a little bit on my floor in my bedroom where it was getting very subtle light and, but because of all the new growth that I've been seeing like right here see that bubbling and it's trying to come up these leaves has been kind of stuck in growth so I thought that maybe if I give it a blast of light it may help it open up I may miss it as well but I I'm really not sure about how misting really promotes blooms opening up or how scientifically factual that is so I mean I don't know we'll see okay so I have some more peace lilies to share y'all know the majority of peace lilies are in my bedroom this is my peace lily domino which is loving life right about now I probably need to rotate it a little bit um it's been giving me a lot of new growth I just love the spinach like wilted feel and look of it one of my favorites out of the um, spathophyllum but no offense to this one this is my og one it's one i've had for at least man three years now you guys and i just up potted it not too long ago you guys so i don't know if it's going to promote more bushiness or whatever the case is and i put it in i'm pulling it out i put it in a clear pot and um you can see some roots. I don't even know if the camera's going to pick it up, but you can see some root action going on right there. Um, so I kind of put it in a clear pot because I wanted to actually monitor the root growth on this one since I've had it the longest. But it's very full and bushy, so, you know, these things really can expand. Up here is another uh, heartleaf philodendron. This is the one that I found from the dollar store and paid I think like what five bucks for this um it's just starting to really grow and trail um you know I just think the all green goes very well with the white can't beat it so up here at the top you guys I have another little small syngonium this is one of those small plants that you buy from Lowe's for what at the time like three bucks or so and actually I'm, I'm lying, I take that back. I got this from Ace and it was actually in a two inch pot planter and I brought, probably paid like three bucks for that. But I had planned on putting that in my terrarium, but I'm kind of glad that I didn't. As you can see, the thing is growing. It would outgrow the terrarium in seconds. Right here, you guys, is a beautiful um, philodendron. This is the, I think it's the cream splash or silver splash um, philodendron. It's like the creamier version of the Brazil, you guys, and I love it. It's finally really taking off trailing, and if you just follow the trail of that yummy creaminess, it's just so beautiful. You could just eat it up. Now, of course, right here, you guys, another one. These Duran Oxypapenses, they are everywhere in my house, you guys. The thing grows so vigorously. I've been chopping it up, giving it away to friends and everything. And this is one of the fastest growing plants I've seen thus far. So, you know, I don't even really use this under light that I have right here um, for this plant because I really do want it to grow as slow as possible. But it's still a beautiful plant. I love the arrow-shaped head. Now my last and final plant, I had to end it with this baby, you guys, is my Spathlophyllum Platinum Mist Piece Lily. And as you can see, this thing is growing, like stretching out. This thing is monstrous. And good thing I only have, let's see, I think like two, it's just three plants in here. But if, could you imagine if it was more plants in here how big and wavy this is but this is like one of the top dogs of my plants um this plant not only blooms for me it's very communicative when it needs water it bounces back tremendously well when i do miss a watering and i give it a drink and i just love it so much it's very minimalistic as far as the crispiness of the leaves very easy care if you do not have one of these plants what are you doing go and get one this plant is amazing. So, you guys, that pretty much wraps it up. But before I end it, I do want to show y'all something. Comment below. 
you know, be gentle with your comments though, you know, cause some, some of you guys can be a little tricky, but the majority of y'all are nice. But what do you think of this, you guys? I just want to end the video with this, non-plant related, but I decided to go ahead and be a little creative with my name and here it is, the full of foliage sign. You probably didn't see it until I actually told you, but if you do see it or notice, it's abstract nonetheless. Comment below, let me know if y'all like it. I'm probably planning on hanging this thing in my sunroom somewhere, but I think it turned out pretty good. Okay guys, so as I mentioned, comment below, let me know what you think of this photo. Um, don't be too brutal if possible, you know. Um, art is in the beauty of the beholder, but anyway, um, keep in mind, you guys, if you love foliage as much as I do and you love listening to planty things, subscribe if you haven't liked and share as well. Keep pushing up those thumbs up because it really has been helping my channel. I'm almost right around the corner to a thousand subscribers, so I really can't wait until that happens. And then when it does happen, of course, I thank each and every last one of y'all for making me a part of the plant community. Enjoy your day wherever you are in the world. And until next time, guys, much love. Bye.